Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, The Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. everyone. My name's Jen. I will be your hostess for the evening. And with me, as always, is Brian. Hey, Brian. Howdy. It's going to be a quiet, uh, quiet night this night. Uh, just two of us tonight. A little different than since last week we had all four people. We yeah. had four people, I should say. Right. Uh, so kind of a little change, but that's all right. Some days you want a nice, quiet night. Sometimes you want to party. <laughs> right. So... Yeah, and thanks to, uh, you know, Clint for joining us last week and, you know, kind of bringing his, uh, bringing the topic to us to talk about. So that was a good talk Absolutely. for all of it us. Was, <clears throat> it was a great topic. Um, and fortunately it was a timely one for him, but, yeah. um, you know. But we won't, we won't rehash. But yes, absolutely, 100% agree. Thank you, Clint, for, for joining us and bringing that up because very good conversation was had. Yep. Yep. With that, so Brian, how you been? How's your week? Um, I'm, I'm dealing with migraine still again this week. Um, mm, which, mm. you know, I know I'm a broken record, but <laughs> it's. No, it's all know, right. Um, you know, last week I had one day without a headache. This week I had two days. So, you know, at least it's moving the right way. <laughs> no. But it's not just me. I've talked with other people that live in the area and they've, they've been having worse ones. Not just in the area. Like one of my uh, mm-hmm. online friends, she lives in Georgia and her and I, like we've been having very similar patterns to our migraines. So it's, you know, it's really weird that, um, yeah, you know, it, it just must be the way the the pressure's moving across the country or something like that. I don't know. Right. So, you know, that's no fun. But, uh, you know, I when they're not as bad, because, you know, some days they're like, I have to just lay in the dark, you know, and that's all that's mm-hmm. going to happen. And then there's other days where I can still kind of function a little bit. I'm st- I'm kind of half brain dead, but I can still go do things a little bit, you know. And, yeah. um so, you know, I got out of the house a couple of times, even with the headaches, you know, cause I just was just tired of being inside and feeling like I want to, you know, just lay in bed all day. Um, but you know, so other than that, I've been, you know, been fairly okay. I'll get to more in a minute, but, um, a couple nights ago I was out with my brother and we were, um, I can't remember where on the highway. But it, it's an area where they just redid the whole area, and um, now there's like a turn that wasn't there before, 
And when you drive straight, it's not, you don't actually go straight. You kind of, you know how some of the roads, you kind of swerve a little bit. Yes. Um, so it's got that on the other side, like they swirl or sw- swerve a little bit. And, uh, we're sitting there and the light changes and my brother goes and we get about halfway through the intersection and here comes two cars like <gasps> turning right toward us basically. And I, I, I think I went like, I don't remember if I said something or I know I went like, like, whoa, or something to that effect or, uh, something, yeah. you know, and my brother saw him, you know, jerk the car left. So we didn't hit the first one. The second car, they moved to their left. So we didn't hit them. And, um, you know, he, uh, he asked me if we hit anybody and I said, no, because I looked, nobody stopped. They just kept going. And it's like, well, yeah. odds are if we would have hit, somebody would have stopped. But when we got to where we were going, um, I got out of the car and I, I, I mean, we were so close to them that I, I looked down the side to make sure that there wasn't like scraping or something. Right. Um, oh my God. Yeah, so, you know, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, God, years ago now, but it's been, oh man, I can't remember how many years ago, 20, something like that, I think about, um, I was in a car accident where my nephew and I hit a truck almost head on coming through an intersection because he didn't yield to, uh, us having the right, right away. And, so I had a flashback of that <laughs> because absolutely it would have been ex- almost exactly the same hit, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. also, I um, uh, so so we're not sure. Like I, I, I just told Tony this when we did salty language, but it's like one of two things happened: either the turn light turned green and my brother thought it was for us and went, which I don't think is the case because we both thought the light was green, Mm -hmm. you know, and being in the passenger seat when you're talking about the light for a lane that's to the left, generally, you know, I'm speaking from tons of experience here. You usually, I don't usually mistake a turn light for the straightaway light. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like to me, they, it looks too far away. And I remember yeah. there being a green light. So I don't think that's what happened. It's possible because, you know, it, it, things happen. But I think what happened was those two either were coming through the light as it was turning, like I told Tony, like on orange, you know, <laughs> or or mm-hmm. the light changed and they just went anyway kind of a thing. Um, because mm-hmm. – and I think they turned – we're turning sooner than they're supposed to. I think they're supposed to go down a little further and then turn. And I think they basically took the inner, the, the turn really sharp. Um, and I think the one car was following the other car. Um, because they were, they were uh. very close together. And even when, once they got around the curve, I could still see them. They were still like that. And there was mm-hmm. a multiple lane. So if one car was trying to push the other one, they could have got around it, but they didn't. They stayed right behind them. So. Yeah. I think they, one was following them. And like I said, I think what it is is somebody just went and the car behind them was like, well, I got to go too, kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, luckily nobody was hurt. There was no accident. There was, you know, any of that. But, uh, I got a real good scare out of it. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. You know, and how's that, uh, how's that affecting? your possibilities of of starting to test drive and stuff again. You know, surprisingly, it wasn't, um, it it didn't ruin me the whole night. Like in the past when I've had close calls, I want out of the car now and I don't want to get back into a car. And I didn't have that this time. Um, great. Yeah. And I, it's probably the medicine more than Mm -hmm. anything, you know? Um, but I didn't have the anxiety that I usually have afterwards i did for a little bit but it's like that's normal you know absolutely i've been in plenty of car accidents and near brushes with people that don't have any sort of a you know anxiety or whatever and they're anxious afterwards so it's like you know that that's a normal behavior you know air quote on normal uh because my brother was was shook up a little bit you know and it's like so yeah that was that was no fun though i'll tell you that (laughs) Uh, I bet. It's like I said, I I really thought we were, I really thought we were going to hit him. I, 
it, it's it, honestly it's amazing to me even like closing my eyes and replaying it that we didn't hit that's oh you know gosh. we were yeah. so so close like at one point i could have reached my hand just out the window and slapped the other car that's how close we were you know oh my I mean, god yeah so you know, like i said you know luckily everybody's okay and all that stuff so you know mm-hmm. that's really all that matters um but yeah it was uh um that that was uh about it like that that night i was still okay to get back in the car we went into a, a mire and you know mm-hmm. a, a, basically a a superstore kind of thing for people who don't know um and we went in there we were in there for probably i don't know half an hour 45 minutes cuz we were looking at a variety of stuff and mm-hmm. you know when we came out i wasn't like you know, anxious or I wasn't like, Hey, let's walk around a little longer. Nothing. I was, I was okay to just get in and go. So it was good. good. Yeah. And then I went out with him again last night and, uh, um, we ended up in a, a traffic jam, like on the highway, there was a bad accident and it took mm. the three lane highway down to basically one. Cause they had, um, what do you call them? Uh, flares marking off the better part of two lanes. Oh, geez. So, and when we saw the cars, they were, it looked like a pretty bad accident. Um, yeah. So, yeah, they had the three lane highway cut down to one. <laughs> so, you just like where you're sitting, you can just see this big curve of red lights way in front. You know, it's like, oh, mm. man. You know, but once you were past the choke point, it was, you know, no problem. It was, traffic was as normal. Like, as soon as you get past the, the where the accident was, it was traffic as normal. It was so weird. You know, so Ugh, gawkers. Yeah. So that was also fun. Luckily, where we were going, we were able to kind of go left. Um, but we still basically drove through all of the the traffic jam, <laughs> you know. Nice. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it's last last two experiences in a car were a little stressful, you know, but whatever. Mm-hmm. The, the traffic jam doesn't bother me a lot. You know, um, after a while it does, cause just like anything, like if I'm in a room with a lot of people, eventually I need to be in a room with less people, you know, like I need that mm-hmm. o- open space kind of thing. And it's kind of that way in cars too. A- after a while of being enclosed in like a traffic jam, it's like, I need open space cause I start feeling really, really anxious usually. So as far as, you know, um, my, the idea of me driving or whatever again, it's like, it's, I don't think it really did much to that. It's, I'm going to be horribly nervous about that no matter what, you know, so it's, you know, hopefully I'll be able to, to just do it, you know, to just try it, Mm -hmm. see what happens. But yeah, so that's been about it for me. I haven't really done a whole lot because migraines. So yeah, I hear you. Yeah. (laughs) Um, well, I've been uh, I've been feeling pretty good. Uh, the medicine is is starting to uh, get in my system and I'm getting adjusted. I'm weaning myself off of, of the Celexa, mm. and that's almost done. And so that just leaves me with the Wellbutrin and the Abilify. But I have found one of the side effects, or maybe not the side effects, but one of the things that the Wellbutrin is not taking care of is my sensitivity. Right. And my tears. Cause I've always, um, been very sensitive to, to feelings. Yeah. And even if they're not my own. So I would be completely not associated whatsoever. It'll be a commercial or something. Right. And it'll hit a cord or something and my eyes will water and I'll start crying. And I'm not even all that, I'm not upset. Set. Like yeah. inside, not right. upset at all. I remember Eyes going crazy. I remember there's been times where I've told you about a movie and I'll be like, or a TV show or something, and I'll be like, mm-hmm. you won't be able to watch it because of this, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I just, I'm, I'm just too in, in tune, in empathetic, I mm-hmm. guess is the right word. Right. I'm just way too sympathetic and empathetic with very well written characters, <laughs> with people, with, just about anything, just who I am. Mm-hmm. Well, the Selexa helped keep that at bay. Right. It made me a little bit, you know, just not as sensitive, I guess, which is very good because the sensitivity is actually the number one reason why I started going to the doctors to begin with. Right. 
because it was interfering with my work. Because in, in a business workplace, people don't take you seriously if your eyes are welling up every every two seconds over stuff. Yep. So. And that, you that, know, that we talked about this a little bit before, but that goes for male mm-hmm. or female. You know, absolutely. Either absolutely. Either one has a real issue because you'll be seen as weak no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what it ultimately comes down to. Whether you want to call, you know, the over emotional female and they get discarded, or too sensitive man and they get discarded. Yep. It's the same reason. It's just, you know, yeah. and it sucks. You should be able to be who you want to be and who you are. Right. Um, but it just doesn't work that way. The world's not quite there yet. Maybe someday. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I go back to my doctor, my psychiatrist in the next week or so, and I will get, uh, I'll talk to him. He was already talking about upping my Wellbutrin. So I'll just ask him for that um, right. and let him know kind of where I'm at. But I've been sleeping less instead of getting nine, ten hours a night. Uh, I'm getting five to six, which is a little light. I need to be focusing on getting a little bit more than that. Yeah. Um, preferably closer to like seven to eight mm-hmm. uh, versus uh, five to six. Yeah. But it's much better. And I know that's good portion of that is the taking out the depression. Yeah. That I was sleeping so much because of the depression. And now that that's getting resolved. I'm going back to a more reasonably adult sleep schedule. Yeah. Although it's funny, so. I, I listened to a podcast a, I don't know, a month ago or mm-hmm. something like that. And it was, it was a, an episode of Hidden Brain. I think I talked about it in here a little bit where the guy talks about sleep and how, like, if you don't get eight hours of sleep, like how, how, how it's really, really bad for you. Like no matter who you are. Like if you get less than eight hours mm-hmm. of sleep, the, it, it immediately like jumps certain numbers for risks and all these other things. And really, yeah, to the point that, you know, he was asked, uh, the host of the show asked him about his, um, sleep schedule. And he was like, I always get eight hours. He's like, if you'd seen the data that I have, he's like, you wouldn't get any less than eight hours. And, uh, you know, so, and I don't remember his name or the book. He has a book where he talks about it and I, it's a book I really want to read. Um, hmm. but ever since then I've been trying harder to get those eight hours. He said it doesn't all have to be in one chunk. It can be four hours here, four hours, you know, or take a couple of naps mm-hmm. or whatever as long, but your body, your body needs, uh, that sleep to basically, cause when you're sleeping, your brain dumps, you know, it, mm-hmm. it flushes a lot of bad things out of your head. Um, and if you don't get enough sleep, your body doesn't do that. So that stuff basically can have some sort of like, I don't want to say toxicity. And again, I'm not a doctor. Keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just something you heard on a podcast. Well, no, the, and, and this guy is, you know, he's, he, that's his yeah, specialty. Yeah. I'm sure he's a reliable yeah. source, but. Right. Yeah. But anyway, you know, it, it was just a very interesting thing to, uh, to hear. Cause you know, every mm-hmm. sleep expert's like, well, you know, you should get this many, but you know, some people don't get as much. And he's basically talked about like studies they've done and stuff and what they found. So it, it was a really wow. kind of eye opening, uh, thing. And uh, you know me, I, I've, uh, struggled with sleep forever anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, it's something I've, I've wanted to get to, to straighten out, but you know, yeah. Anyway, sorry. I yeah. Went on this. Oh, no, 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 that's fine. Yeah, it's sleep, it's, it's very important. And, and I've come from a family that were sleepers and we've all been very, you know, we sleep pretty well up until we get through the six, you know, when you're 60 or 70. That's when, uh, my family, we, they start to not need as much sleep. Right. You know, but that's pretty typical of, of humans. You know, as we age, we don't need quite as much. For some reason, our systems just don't need it. Yeah, there are a lot of people. Yeah, there's a lot of people that go on like four hours of sleep as they age. Some do it in their youth, you know. And right. I don't Which know. Boggles how, my mind. I don't know how that happens. That's what I've heard. Um, like Vince McMahon goes on. It's like four or five hours because otherwise he feels like he's wasting time. You know. Oh wow. Yeah, and it's. I mean, it, you know, if you look at what he's, you know, he's. He's done. I mean, it's tough to argue with his theory. (laughs) Right. I guess it's worked for him. But you've got to have his drive with that, you know. Yeah. Most people don't have that drive. (laughs) 
You are correct, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then my other big news is I actually got a new job. So, and Brian, you already kind of knew about this because, you know, I can't keep my mouth shut for nothing. But, and honestly, something like this, I don't want to keep my mouth shut because I'm pretty, I'm proud of myself, quite frankly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I went on a, an interview with uh, a global company. And, and for the record, folks, I did put on the resume because bipolar is uh, protected. Mm-hmm. Um, by the Disabilities Act, and when they ask you if you have a disability, if you'd like to disclose, I did disclose that I'm bipolar. So if uh, whether that makes a difference to you or not, but um, it's a personal choice, and by no means do I say everyone has to disclose, but um, it is something that I felt I felt strongly that I needed to do that. So yeah, but um, or not on my resume, but you know what I'm saying on the applications and that type of stuff. Right, right. So I went on this interview and it went really, really well. And uh, two days later, they called back and they offered me more money than I'm currently making, plus paid overtime, plus vacation benefits, matching 401k, the whole big bang schmang. So <laughs> right. I had no, no questions saying yes to this. Um, I'm still going to be working the crazy hours. So sorry, folks, you're not getting a break from listening to me complain about all the hours I'm working. Um, you're going to be stuck with that for a while longer. Right, right. You know, but hey, hey that's the way it is. Um, but uh, it's good. I feel really good about it. And uh, <laughs> kind of a compliment, not really a compliment type of situation, is when I ended up telling them at work um, – I sent my notice out. I, I wasn't happen, didn't happen to be there when they got the notice. Right. And the boss boss re- saw it and said, what the hell are we going to do? Right. Like, we are screwed. And yes, it's nice to hear that you're valued that way. Right. He wouldn't be in this position if he didn't take care of me, if he would have taken care of me all along. There's that. He, yeah. It's kind of one of those, you make your bed, you got to lie in sure. it sometimes. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, but, you know, I'm giving my two weeks and everything like that, and I'll start the new job on the 16th, and I am look forward to telling everybody how it's going and uh, and all about it. I mean, the good news is I get three days off um, unless they call me in for overtime. But right. for the most part, <laughs> I'm scheduled to have three days off. Right, yeah, that's, um, that's a, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a four-day-a-week job, four tens. Um most likely it's probably going to be closer to four twelves, but, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Right. So that's my big news. Um, okay. So real know- quick, real quick before we move into that part, I found the, um, the podcast and the book. Um, like I said, oh, I think I talked about it in here before, but I'm going to bring it up again, whatever. Um, the episode is, it's the hidden brain podcast, which is an awesome podcast. Anyway, they're usually about 40 minutes or less. And a lot of it, it just talks about, um, behavior, like behavior stuff. Um, mm-hmm. anyway, this one is called, uh, shoot, where'd it go? <laughs> I just had the title. Uh, nuts. Oh, it's called Eyes Wide Open 2. I'll have the link in the, um, notes if anybody wants to take a look at it. Um, and the, the guy who I was referring to, his name is Matthew Walker. Uh, he's a ph he has a phd in uh neuroscience and um or not neuroscience yeah director he's a director of uc berkeley sleep and neuroimaging lab that's what it is so anyway it, the book is called why we sleep and uh i'll have a link to the you know to it on amazon if anybody wants to you know see what it looks like or buy it through there or whatever i'm not you know not pushing mm-hmm. it but so okay so there's that. So, cause it was going to bug me if I didn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been there before. Yeah. It's okay. So nice. that's, that's that part. Like I said, it's, it was an interesting podcast. The book's probably really interesting. I just haven't bothered to read it mm-hmm. yet. So. Well, you are, you have the topic of the day today, don't you? Yeah. We're gonna be, yep. So we're going to be talking about uh, being overwhelmed today. 
Uh, Brian found some information on it, but it's something that we both feel quite frequently. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if we actually had devoted a show to it yet. So here it is, folks. Here's your overwhelmed show. <laughs> yeah, I don't um, – uh, like you said, I don't know if we have or not. I didn't look. We may have, but whatever. Nothing wrong with a refresh, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. So lately I've been feeling really overwhelmed. And, uh, you know, it's a very common thing with anxiety and depression. Um, a lot of times it's just because I, I will put just all sorts of added stress on myself, you know, like a, you know, like about not working or not doing this or what, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Like, Mm -hmm. so, and in my head, it's almost like a, you're measuring yourself up to a, well, you're a failure if you don't this. You know, and there's a list basically, mm-hmm. you know, oh, you don't check everything off, you're a failure kind of a thing. So that's where mine usually uh, starts and kind of stays. Uh, but sometimes, like lately, I, I haven't even necessarily felt that, that stuff. I've just felt really overwhelmed. And, and this was before I had the migraines and stuff. Like with the migraines, I, I kind of ignore a lot of this kind of stuff because they really mess with my head. You know, they, they mm-hmm. basically make me want to do nothing but just, you know, like I said before, just lay in bed in a dark room. Um, so it's easy to feel overwhelmed because at that point it's more of an overwhelmed, like, well, when will these go away kind of thing? Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, uh, this, I found, I've got a couple, uh, posts here. And again, they'll be in the show notes if anybody wants to read the full post because I'm not gonna, uh, not go through everything. Um, but the one here talks about, um, uh, like when, when you're feeling overwhelmed mentally or from anxiety mentally, um, that basically, you know, most people think that it makes it hard to focus, but it, this person says that it actually doesn't, it makes it easy to focus, but all you focus on is your, uh, anxiety and, and in insecurities essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, which makes sense. It says, you know, some people experience a feeling of emotional distress that they may start to cry or feel like they're about to cry, while others may experience a complete lack of hope if their anxiety is never going to be treatable. I fall, mm-hmm. I fall more into the second category. And, and not that mine's not treatable, but it just, I've been dealing with it so long, it doesn't feel like there's an end in sight, you know? <laughs> sure. Um, but it says, you know, like if you have anxiety attacks, it says uh, the feelings of over- mm. being overwhelmed may be less about the overwhelming nature of anxiety and more about a feeling of doom that seems to affect those that are struggling with panic attack issues. This feeling of doom can make you feel like you're about to suffer from something terrible, often health related, and it, it can cause your body to become completely on edge. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. And uh, then it goes into... Um, feeling overwhelmed from anxiety physically and uh you know anxiety's got a bunch of you know stuff symptoms that are that just suck to have anyway um mm-hmm. but it says the ones that are the most common are you know rapid rapid heartbeat chest pains trouble breathing nausea and lightheadedness slash dizziness which is you know very similar to um uh or you know like when you have a panic attack those are very common. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, like I said here, sometimes the, just those feelings can cause a panic attack. It can, you know, it can be, uh, snake eating its own tail, you know, just. Yeah. And it's so, it's so easy to get overwhelmed just by the sheer, just life. Yeah. You know, it is everything it, going on. It's just life. Yeah. It's easy enough for somebody without any mental illness to sure. feel overwhelmed. And, you know, just with, just the way everything is, you know, worrying about bills and family Mm -hmm. and blah, blah, you know, all this stuff. And, um, you know, if you throw in depression and anxiety on top of that, you know, you feel that way. So a lot of times you'll feel that way easier, you know, um, Mm -hmm. like I, I always have felt overwhelmed really easily, um, which stinks, you know, cause when stress hits you, you're kind of. You know, you like you immediately um, go into worst case scenario kind of mode, you know? (laughs) 
Right? Yeah, exactly. Which is, of course, there's, distorted thinking. But, you know. Yeah. There's actually, and I'm just looking that up right now, Christina Kazumik. And it is, um, let me see here. I know she goes by something in particular, like, uh, I don't know, Crazy Mom or, or something like that. But her name, is, it's Christina Kazumik, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A-K-U-Z-M-I-C for you folks. Um, she is a mom and she talks about being overwhelmed a lot in different situations um, when it comes to parenting and stuff. Mm. And her whole purpose of these videos, and I, they're little videos on Facebook and I'm sure on YouTube, um, is to let people know the honest truth of being a mom, honest truth of being a parent, and the stuff that you go through. Uh, this video in particular that I reposted is called Not Embarrassed. And she's talking about her son or her child um, having a temper tantrum in the middle of the street. And she said, you know, I sh- some people think I should be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. She's like, I'm not. I'm not embarrassed at all. And I'm not going to be embarrassed because he doesn't know how to express his, his emotions yet. We're working on it. You know, she's like, but he's still learning how to express his emotions. Right. And he's going through whatever the little kid goes through. And do do you out there judging me and saying that, you know, making faces and making noises, you know, and judging me for being a bad parent? Every child goes through this. My child is not a brat. My child had a temper tantrum. It happens, folks. Right. And I love the way she puts things because she addresses things like that. Like the pressures we put on ourselves that overwhelm us because most of the time, and I'm just going to, you know, I would say most of the time there's some exceptions to the rule, but most of the things that we must get done, must have to be done. All those must, 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 must are all in our heads. Yeah. You know, most of them are wants. I want to get this done today. I want to do this. I want the want I want. Yeah. Not I must, I must, I must, I must. Because when you sit there and go, I must, I must, I must, I must, you are creating this overwhelming, overarching pressure upon yourself that does not need to be there. Right. You know, and that's a, a lot of things that she ends up talking about and touching on. And it really, I don't have children. And I like listening to her because, A, she's funny, and, B, it makes a lot of sense. And I notice even some of the stuff that I do, like when a child's having a temper tantrum, in my head, I'm like, don't they just take them out of the store? And, you know, I do that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's causing me to kind of take a step back at myself and going, who are you judging? Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. It's understandable. <clears throat> Yeah, I actually, I just, um, I pulled up her Facebook page, and again, link for that's in the show notes, too. So, awesome. Wants to Thank her. you. Yep. I'm sure you can, you know, find all her other stuff from her Facebook page. I'm sure, you know, whatever else she has available. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, if, you, if, you have, if you have kids, it's a good watch for parent, for dads and moms, not just moms. Right. Yeah, and and again, that's you know something where she may not have any sort of mental illness whatsoever, but just being mm-hmm. a parent is overwhelming. Everybody mm-hmm. I know that's a parent has had the overwhelming feeling at some point or another, or mm-hmm. has it a lot because you know whatever, whether it's their kids active and they have to run them to different things, or it's just some some kids need more than others, you know, whatever it is. It's it's just there's so many things that can make us feel this way naturally. You know, it it stinks when you're starting out behind the eight ball, you know, it's almost like when you start, you're, it's like, here's your backpack of overwhelm, you know, feeling of overwhelmed. And then it's like, and then life just keeps handing you backpacks, you know, it's like, I've already (laughs) got one. This one and that one. And, oh, you don't have a pink one yet. (laughs) Yeah. So it's, you know, it's easy to see how people become overwhelmed so easily. Um, Absolutely. This this one here talks about like uh has a few points on how to or a few things it suggests for um when you're feeling overwhelmed uh to stop feeling that way. Uh the first one is 
um, find distractions. And this is one my therapist mentioned to me. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it says like talking on the phone is hard to, for the mind to do while focusing on your anxiety. Um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and, and like I said, that's, that's one that I use. If I start feeling overwhelmed, I try to find something that I will zone into and, you know, it'll get my brain off of that. Like, honestly, um, a few days ago when I was really having some feelings like that, I started playing, uh, Magic the Gathering on my Xbox Mm. because that game, I have to, my brain has to work on the game. So it disengages from the anxiety and it just focuses on, you know, uh, Mm playing, playing the game and stuff. So stuff like that, or sometimes I'll just, you know, it's as simple as I'll just watch like, you know, uh, Simpsons or Family Guy or Bob's Burgers or something and just, you know, something mindless and just laugh, Mm -hmm. you know, so whatever it is you need to do, you know, especially if it's something you enjoy, it generally will help, um. You know, but like for me, I can't read when I'm feeling overwhelmed because I, I can't focus on Yeah, on I'm, the I have a hard time yeah. reading. But if you can, then, you know, that's a good option too. But, you know, it's, I, I can't. So I usually go to games or like a TV show or mm-hmm. something so that, uh, or, you know, like I've done Sudoku, like, and the, it's the same thing is that my brain is so wrapped in the game that, you know, mm-hmm. it, let's go of the other stuff for a little bit. I mean, it'll be there, you know, <laughs> Right. later on, it'll come back home, but you know, <laughs> Oh yeah. Um, another good way to work with um, anxiety and being overwhelmed is, you know, spend a little time with your, you know, your four legged furry friends Yeah. or no legged scaly friends or four legged scaly friends <laughs> or, Pretty much any friends. <laughs> right. We'll cover, we'll cover them all. Yep. The ones that live in aquariums and everything. Whatever it is, you know, spend some time with them because they'll be non judgmental. And unless it's something like they need food and water, they usually will, you know, pretty much let you slide on just about anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, the next one on here is go for a walk. See, this one wouldn't work for me. This would be, well, uh, let me get it this way. Uh, on first glance, it, it would be hard for me to do, but then after I read the rest of it, it's a little different, I guess. Mm. Cause it's basically mentioning like, go for a walk and, um, pay attention to what you see, to what you feel, what you smell, like walk through your senses, you know, yeah, which yeah, is a kind of a, a grounding technique a little bit too, you know, mm-hmm. um, and, and that makes sense. You know, as you're walking around, look, what do you see? Oh, I see, you know, green grass, blah, blah, blah. And do that. Like, be descriptive in your own mm-hmm. brain with it. You know, I see this and this. I smell this. It, you know, blah, blah. And just do it because you'll find that, again, by engaging a different uh, activity, your brain has a hard time focusing on the anxiety, too, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And it can... You know, also, you know, as it points out here, you know, walking's not bad for you. You know, it helps move blood mm-hmm. around your body and, you know, it's, it's a good tool for, uh, uh, breathing and stuff. So, you know, and, yep. you know, whatever, it's just a little bit of exercise too, which generally isn't going to hurt most of us. So, <laughs> and for those of you who actually listen to the end of the show and have heard me mention wiggling your toes. Mm-hmm. That comes from very early episodes where we talk about wiggling your toes increases the blood flow and the oxygen within your blood flow and within your blood will help wake you up, will help you stay present, and something about wiggling your toes usually makes you smile. So, even if you can't go up and go for a walk, if you're at your desk and feeling overwhelmed at work, sit there and just wiggle, 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 and do that in your head too as you're wiggling them go wiggle 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 wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> and pretty soon you'll start laughing or you'll start smiling and uh you a lot of that overwhelmingness will kind of slowly dissipate right yeah or whatever it ends up being you know that's what i know some people use um you know like those uh fidget cubes or or type of things mm-hmm. because it, you you need to 
uh, distract yourself from something or whatever. And, you know, so stuff like that can work too. Um, just kind of whatever works for you. That's a distraction, you know, it's, or, um, like you said, or, um, walking or whatever it is, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but that part led into the next one, which is controlled breathing, which we've talked about ad nauseum on here. (laughs) Um, Breathe people breathe. Yep. Uh, be, and also controlling your breathing can help because when your anxiety really gets going, you, you know, if you are prone to panic attacks, mm-hmm. you, you know, you can go into hyperventilation and whatnot. So this, um, you know, it mentions on here, oh uh, shoot, where is it? Oh, I oh, see. It's just talking about what hyperventil, hyperventilation mm-hmm. is. Okay. Uh, it's, you know, so. We, now with being overwhelmed, you know, another thing that that I found was very beneficial is lists. Is that on the list? It's actually the next one. <laughs> ah, there we go. Well, I'm a it, mind reader. it says journaling, but you know, yeah. it kind of works in the same realm. Exactly. Um, big thing for me is is lists and prioritizing. You know, when I have, I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'll actually write down what I have to do so I can pinpoint if I'm being overwhelmed by just anxiety in life in general, or am I being overwhelmed because I have way too much things I need to accomplish in a day? Or, you know, where is my overwhelmed feeling coming from? Now, if you have a hard time prioritizing, a good way to do to help you is to reach out to your support system or those around you. One of the big things that I do is I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm not getting anything done during the week that I need to get done. I'll look at my husband and I'm like, if you had your choice of one thing to get done around this house, what would it be? Yeah. You know, and he'll look at me and go, you know, I really need some socks. Yeah. Like done. Yep. You know, so I can, at least I can, I know that you know he's not going to be upset because i'm meeting his needs and i can get one thing done which make me feel accomplished but i'm not trying to do it all the laundry i can do one or two loads of laundry right yeah that's and that would be okay that's part of the key if you do use lists is um and, and you go that route is to pick something you like basically you know you can finish you know Mm-hmm. Don't pick the, you know, uh, aiming for the moon kind of goal, you know, or if you put that on there, also put smaller goals or, or tasks you need to do that way, you know, cause yeah. you want to at least mark something off. It's why I said a long time ago when we did a talk about list that I was like, you know, if I was making one, mine would always have like, get out of bed on it, you know, mm-hmm. that way every time I get out of bed, boom, I got one thing crossed off my list, <laughs> you know. And, Done. Yeah. You know, so at the worst case scenario, I can look at the end of the day and say, well, at least I did that, you know, and even if it's something mm-hmm. as silly as that. Um, but yeah, this also mentions, uh, journaling, uh, which makes sense. Cause you know, again, you're, um, it's the idea of it, you're getting the thoughts out of your head basically, you right. know, instead of keeping them all in and focusing and whatnot by journaling, you're putting them into another place. Uh, whether it's, you know, on paper or on a blog or even just, you know, pulling up uh, the like notes app on your phone and just typing it in mm-hmm. there, you know, even if you were deleted afterward or something, you know, just sometimes just the process of doing that uh, can make a big difference. You know, that's actually mm-hmm. a big reason why I embraced Twitter as much as I did was because that's what Twitter became for me was my, you know, as I was feeling stuff, I could kind of just throw it out there you know, and, and just leave it, you know, just be, it's out of my head Mm -hmm. now, you know? Uh, I have to get stuff out of my head all the time, you know? And a lot of times it's a form of, you know, snippets of music Mm -hmm. because I have a little mini jukebox up there and someone will say something and it'll trigger a song in my head and I have to get it out because if I don't get it out, then it's stuck there all day and I'm like, nope, can't do it. Yeah. So, it's because our brains, you know? our brains try to complete things. You know, it's like somebody will sing a song <laughs> and they'll only sing part of like the hook or something. And you're like, and you want to finish it because it's just what our yes. brains want to do. You know, it's so the, yeah, one of the best episodes of the Big Bang Theory is where Sheldon um, and Amy 
Amy's doing a, a test on Sheldon. And he says that he can go without completing things. And she disagreed. And so they made a, a bet. And she did a bunch of tests with him, like tic-tac-toe, unfinished game. They had to stop in the middle of the game. Uh, dominoes all set up, ready to go. All he has to do is tap the one, and they all fall down. She wouldn't let him tap it. <laughs> and the ultimate is <laughs> she started playing the Star Spangled Banner and then just stopped. Yeah. <laughs> and he's in at that point, she's like, you know, you did a great job. You didn't. She leaves. He instantly knocks up the dominoes, finishes the, you know, tic-tac-toe, right. and then goes to the piano and, and finishes the song. Yep. Because it's just, he cannot comprehend yeah. not, not finishing. It right. just can't. And it is, it really is our mm-hmm. nature to do that kind of thing. I remember there was an episode yeah. of, um, I think it was Brain Games, that TV show that was on. I think they talked about oh, it yeah. a little bit. Or maybe it was on Hidden Brain, I don't know, it was one or the other. Where they talked about how our brain wants to finish things. Like it doesn't like leaving things undone like that. Especially things mm-hmm. that, like like the Star Spangled Banner. It's like we all know how it ends. We know the mm-hmm. song. And it's like so if we hear half of it, like whether we sing it out or not, it's like the rest of it will mm-hmm. probably play in our head. Or, you know, like you have an earworm that, you know, mm-hmm. a song that just won't leave your head. <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. And it's like, you know, sometimes it's like you just have to... um you have to find something that's similar in uh, beats and whatnot. I forgot all the science behind it, but there's actual science on earworms of how to essentially get rid of one with another kind of a thing. But, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, now that we all have Star Spangled Banner in our <laughs> in our heads. The <laughs> next one I on here. You, but I- what? I have it going right through it. Yeah, I did as you were saying it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next one on here is uh, exercise, which, again, makes sense because, you know, you're focusing on uh, working out and stuff. So, of course, you know, it can be good against anxiety and, uh, again, also, you know, working out when done responsibly mm-hmm. can be good for you, you know. Just don't, mm-hmm. just don't make it, uh, you know, an obsession kind of thing, so... Or push Absolutely. yourself too far kind of a deal because, you know, that then you're into no good territory. But, um, this other article that I have has has some stuff on it too. And you mentioned one already, which was get out a pen and paper and make a list of things you have to do. Um, the next thing on it says just pick one thing and just do it. Doesn't matter what it is. Just pick one thing and do it. Yeah. Which is why a long time ago I started – I switched doing my to-do list. And we've talked on here, me and Heno – I know for sure um, about how I used to put everything I wanted to get done on a to-do list and now I'll still do that, but I'll also make like on a post it and I'll put like three things, you know, and, mm-hmm. and it, there'll be a varying likelihood of getting done, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's like, Oh, how ambitious do I feel right now? Okay. I'll go for this one, you know? Mm-hmm. But again, the goal is to get, you know, one or two things off that list. And if you do complete them all, you can add more or just, you know, be happy that you got those things done and that's it. Right. But it really does help, uh, especially splitting your lists up mm-hmm. also. Um, you know, not, uh, you know, again, if you have 20 things to do today, even if you make um, five or six lists, with just a few things on it, you know, do that. And then you get one done and then move to another list or something kind of a thing. So Mm -hmm. that you don't just don't look at 20 things, you know, you're only looking at like three or four. The other thing, if you happen to be at work and you get overwhelmed, ask your boss to prioritize, help you prioritize. Yeah. You know, like, you know what? I've got six things going on at the same time. Is there one that you feel needs to go first or needs to be a higher priority than the rest? Yeah. And a lot of times they'll just flat out tell you. They're like, oh, yeah, this needs to be done right away. This can kind of wait. And this, you know, you don't have to worry about doing that. So-and-so's doing it already. Like, sweet, done. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a very common conversation. Yeah. Exactly. Um forgot where I was going or the next there it is I lost the <laughs> thing here um, and then the last one on here says or on this one says reward yourself when you accomplish something on your list um, 
mm-hmm. you know, it mentions uh, watch a TV show you love, eat a chocolate bar, read a trashy magazine, read a good book for an hour, do something that makes you feel good to reward yourself for completing your task. This reinforces productivity. So, yeah, and I agree. I'm not a big fan of using food as a reward, but, you know, most of the other stuff I can see. But even then, I mean, you know, if you, I'm going to have a piece of chocolate because I did this today, I, you know. Mm-hmm. A lot of times what I'll use is, um, I keep going back to work, but work is, I get overwhelmed with work a lot, is I'll reward myself to two minutes of not staring at my computer. Right. So instead of multitasking <laughs> or something like that, I'll take a minute or two and look out the window. Right. Which is funny yeah. because you should be doing that anyway. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. right. But you I know, understand. But it's, yeah. Or I'll do some, you know, just, again, things you should always be doing, but I'll be doing some chair exercises and stuff like that. Yeah. Just to kind of uh, give myself a little break. Yeah, and, and really, you know, I'm sure everybody's listening noticed, like, the the overwhelming theme with this is when is when you're – overwhelmed uh with stuff the the way one of the better ways to deal with it is is like the very first thing it's just distract yourself um Mm -hmm. you know and then the other is like this one where it mentions you know uh making the list and and going from that because the two things will really help because instead of again if you instead of Mm -hmm. feeling like you have to get 20 things done today you go i have three things in front of me that i have to get done it's much easier to process that because i'm the type of person that will, I will do the math on stuff. Like if I have 10 things I need to do today and I have X, whatever amount of five hours, let's say, I'll go, okay, I only have this much time for each activity, you know, type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I used to do that, you know, like in school when they give you like those, um, uh, well, any test, honestly, but it started with the math ones where you have like mm-hmm. 50 math questions or whatever and you have an hour type of thing so in my head i'm like okay i've got about a minute for each one and then a little bit of time to review or if one stumps me i can come back to it type of thing so Mm -hmm. i would literally sit there especially if i had a watch on i would sit there with my hand out in front of me to watch where i was and when i got and i'd try to stay ahead of that number you know and that's how obsessed i got with those things you know and and that's really not a great way of doing it because <laughs> that's putting extra stress on yourself when you're already in a stressful environment, you know? <laughs> true, true. <laughs> it worked for me, but I don't recommend it, you know? Because. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, just, you know, like I said, just whatever you can find that distracts you. You know, as Jen said, you know, you're if you have a pet, that works. You know, take them for a walk or just, you know, pet them for a while or whatever and. You know, watch or watch some dumb TV or, you know, just whatever it is that, that makes you, that kind of makes you happy also is, is a great thing. If you can do both at one time, that's even better, you know, Mm -hmm. distract, um, or disrupt the feeling of overwhelm, overwhelmingness and, uh, also do something that makes you happy. Then it's, it's kind of a a two point swing, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, but all right, that's. That's all I got in these things. So there's more, uh, there's more in them, but like I said, they'll be in the show notes if anybody wants to read them. Um, all right, so. cool. Well, you know, I like our conversation. You know, we didn't go too far into it and stuff, but I think we covered a lot of ground. And I, it's very important that everyone get takes away from this is over being overwhelmed. It is a natural state of being a human being. You know, yeah. we do. All experience it mm-hmm. for sure. So by no means do you f- feel alone out there because I guarantee you someone is going, is feeling just as overwhelmed at the same time. Yeah. So please don't feel that you're over, that you're all alone. And a lot of times the feelings of overwhelmingness can get so bad that you need to take action on them. Yeah. And sometimes my action is not the most positive, productive action. Right. So I just have to caution you. If you are consistently feeling overwhelmed, please, 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 please reach out and get some help. Yeah. You know, because next to loneliness, I think being overwhelmed is the, uh, yeah. One of the worst feelings o- over being overwhelmed to me feeds hopelessness. Yes. 
because you feel Absolutely. you feel so overwhelmed that you feel like you can't dig out of a hole so why bother and but it, it feeds the mm-hmm. whole beast and you know unfortunately mental illness it it feeds itself so much and then it also will eat other things <laughs> you know yeah. <laughs> yeah it just it's this giant blob that will yeah. absorb everything right. if you let it and, and that's the key you got yeah. How to fight back. Right. And like you said, you know, it's, if you're in therapy, especially, um, mention it to your therapist because this is something that they're going to have all sorts of things that may work for you. And again, you know, maybe you got to work through some stuff with, with, like we've talked on here. It's why we tend to throw more than one thing at, at somebody. We're not doctors, but it's like, here are things that could work, you Mm -hmm. know, cause something like this, you know, um, uh, you know, I think we all will try to fix it ourselves before we go to a doctor, you know, mm-hmm. because it seems harmless, you know, um, but it, it really can be harmful. Like you said, if, if left, uh, to, to gain enough strength. So, um, uh, yeah, definitely mention it to your therapist or doctor or whoever you need to even just, you know, talk to a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, cause it, like you said, Jen, you know, we all, we all feel this way at some point or another. So we can all identify with somebody if they come to you and say, like if, if someone comes to a lot of people and says, I'm, you know, I'm depressed or this or this, (laughs) you know, they might not know exactly what you feel like, but overwhelmed, everybody knows what that feels like. Cause we've Mm -hmm. all been there, you know? So definitely not that, and this is better or worse than anything else, but you know, definitely one that, you can reach out to friends and stuff also, you know, it doesn't have to be a, mm-hmm. a doctor right away, but you know, absolutely. Yep. And I guess with that folks, you know what to do. You want to come on the show and talk with us, reach out and talk to us. So you can reach me on Twitter at Jen's crazy life. It's Jen with the G you can reach the show at the crazy life podcast. Podcast.weebly.com. You can also shoot us an email at the crazy life podcast at outlook.com. Uh, you can reach Heno and Twitter at Ida Heno. Mm-hmm. And he's also on Facebook as Heno Heiter. So you can reach out to him, even though he's not with us this week. He's traveling and spreading the Hano joy across the land. <laughs> Literally, too. I mean, he yes. he was in, like, Jersey, and he flew all the way to San Francisco. <laughs> yes, he so. is spreading Hano joy <laughs> yeah. everywhere he goes. <laughs> so, and how about you, Brian? How can they reach you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. Uh, you can also find the show on Twitter at the Crazy Life Pod, where I post when new episodes go up. Um, you can find my other podcast at salty underscore language or at salty language.com. It's a very not safe for work podcast. So, you know, uh, be careful. Um, lost my place again. Dang it. Um, geez, I'm really all over the place here. Uh, <laughs> you can check out our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Um, we're part of the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. Uh, so please go check them out and see if there's other shows you may be interested in. There's all sorts of shows over there. Um, if you want to help us out, we'd appreciate it if you're on, um, well, it's Apple Podcasts now. It used to be iTunes. Mm-hmm. Um, the app anyway. Um, if you're using that, please rate, review, and subscribe to the show. Um, that helps us get more, you know, potentially get more listeners. Or if you're using, um, excuse me, if you're using, uh, Spotify or, um, speaker, yeah, speaker, geez. <laughs> speaker is one that I keep, <laughs> pops in my head. Um, or if you use, um, um, Stitcher. Jeez, I couldn't think of it. <laughs> I am just, you should have heard me on Salty Language. I, I'm a wreck for the last part of the show. Oh, nice. So, which is weird because again, no headache today. This is how I normally behave when I have a, a migraine. I can't put yeah. thoughts together. Um, anyway, if, if you're using those other apps, please use the like or share options for the same reason that can help us mm-hmm. get more listeners. Uh, or also if you could, you know, please join our group on Facebook. 
and share any posts that we put up. Like I always put up the new episodes each week on there and sometimes I'll throw an article from something else on there. Um, or share our post on, uh, uh, Twitter, you know, with, with your friends and whatnot and try to help out. Um, and I think, I think that's all of those. So, uh, if you feel as though you need help again, please don't, um, don't wait, you know, go talk to your doctor or a therapist or uh, something like that. Um, please don't self-diagnose and please don't, um, use this show as a replacement for therapy or help. Um, you know, we, we want everybody to, you know, go get the estimate and see what the doctors say. And then you can go from there. Uh, if you feel as though you may harm yourself or others, please reach out to somebody. Um, and don't wait until, you know, you're well into it. If you find yourself, um, writing notes like suicide notes, or you find yourself planning how you would do something, tell somebody right then that's a giant red flag and you may be able to get ahead of it before it's a problem. Um, and then the last thing is I always say, reach out to somebody, uh, tell them you appreciate them, tell them you love them, just see how they're doing. Um, just w whatever it is, but reach out to somebody, especially somebody you haven't talked to in a while. Uh, or if it's somebody, you know, with, you know, a mental illness issue, reach out and just make sure they're okay. Uh, cause in the end, you know, you, you probably make their day and, you know, you may save their life. Absolutely. And, you know, it's just, we can't emphasize that enough, enough folks, make sure you reach out and talk to people, you know, being overwhelmed, being lonely, all of this stuff is universal in some way, shape or form. So we all can understand each other. So please, 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 please reach out and stay healthy out there. And we will be here for you next week. <laughs>